Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, brand ambassador, and countdown to New Year's Eve. I'm so excited. I have on my New Year's Eve outfit. <laughs> Very exciting. So anyways, we have a great show for you today. Sarah's joining us, and wait to see these awesome bags that she has. Be right back. If you've never been here with us before, say hi, say where you're from. We are streaming on Brother Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube pages, but one thing's different. We actually pre-recorded this show because both of us are busy getting ready for New Year's and we'll take a little vacation time, but we didn't want to miss joining you. So we'll be in the chat, but in the meantime, let's bring Sarah up. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi, Angela. Good. How are you? Great to see you. So I'm so excited for your project. Yeah, I'm excited too. I can't believe it's almost 2022. Time flies. I can't believe it. I'm just thinking I cannot believe, you know, I don't know about you, but the week between, well, pretty much the whole holidays, but the week of New Year's is when I kind of come together with lists, maybe some other gifts I need to buy that I missed for the holidays, but I kind of come up with a sewing program for the next month. How about you? Oh, really? Um, I don't think I'm quite as organized, but that sounds like a really good uh, way to do things. <laughs> I didn't say I finished anything. It's just another little thing. <laughs> it's just a plan. Yeah. It's just a plan. So those of you that don't know Sarah, she's a brand ambassador, or she's a brother educator. Apologize for that. <laughs> she, you're really both, actually. <laughs> a brother yeah. educator. You might have seen her at events. And she has her own website, which I have listed down below because you have awesome items on there as well. And I put all of our Instagrams above because we'd love to see what you're working on. Yes, check it out, give me a follow. I'd love to chat with you guys. Excellent, now, if you wanna watch the show later, by the way, make sure if you're on Facebook to share it to your page. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to Brother Sewing and you can watch the show again. So let's get rolling. Let me, you gotta show everyone what you're making. These are so stinking cute. Yes, so I was racking my brain to think of a fun New Year's Eve project. And what kind of came to mind was when you go over to celebrate New Year's Eve with your friends or your family, you bring a bottle of champagne to, you know, pop at midnight, have a drink. So I wanted to come up with some cute little projects to decorate your wine bottle, your champagne bottle, or whatever you're bringing over to your friends or family's house. And of course, because this time of year is just so busy and everyone's so stressed, I came up with a few different options. So these are kind of my take on like a wine tag. Um, it's I kind of call it a, a wine charm. So it's a little embroidered design. That's cute, oh my gosh. And it just ties right onto your wine bottle. So if you're really burnt out from the holiday season, but you still wanna make something from for New Year's, this is a really easy project to do. Um, and it's really cute. So I just wrapped my bottle here in tissue paper and then popped that charm on there for a nice little little touch. That's really cute. That looks pretty fast too, something that you could quickly do. Yeah, exactly. So here's another design that I came up with and I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of these today. We're gonna talk about all the different techniques, how to sew these together. So this one is just Happy New Year. This celebrate one I like because it's it's a little bit generic. So if you wanted to make one of these or maybe make a couple all at once, you can use this design for any occasion that you're celebrating, not just New Year's. Um, and this one is actually a heat transfer vinyl. So we'll talk about how to do that. These are so creative and you're right. This doesn't just have to be for New Year's. I'm thinking that one would be great for Valentine's, a birthday party, anything like that. Yeah, exactly. And then if you have a little bit more time that you want to spend on this project, I'm going to show you how to make an actual wine bag. So this one is embroidered with 2022 and all different fun fonts and metallic thread. So it's nice and shiny. Oh, I love that. So were the other ones, did you just have those wrapped in tissue paper, the other ones? Yeah, these are oh. all tissue paper. Super easy. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of just pleated the paper almost, like pinched it together to give it that nice look. It looks kind of professional. I'm happy with how it came out. 
And then this is the other design that we'll talk about. This is also a heat transfer vinyl on the bag here. And this little ribbon, I just tacked it at the back to keep it on there. So this is, instead of making a tunnel for your ribbon, you could just kind of tack it on. That way it won't get lost, but it still looks really pretty. That's cute. Oh, this is very exciting. So many different options. Oh my gosh. All right, so what are we gonna start with? Trust me, I had to stop myself. I could have kept going for days. <laughs> We're going to have a whole week long of bag making. <laughs> yep. All right. So we are going to start with the Happy New Year little medallion here. This one. Yep. So let me switch over to my Luminaire. All right. So she's using the Brother Luminaire. And she's also using the Scan and Cut 330D. So in case you're wondering. All right. Yeah. Let's see so here we are, and we're going to start in embroidery mode. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to pick out my circle shape. So I'm going to go into my frame patterns and I'm going to pick number two. That's just the basic satin edge circle. I'm going to set that on there and it's coming out to two and three quarters inches. And that's a pretty good size for a wine bottle. So I'm going to leave it at that size. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my text. So I'm going to choose the font category, and I believe this font is number eight. So then I'll just go in and type out my message. And I'm going to make this size small. I'm going to start with small, and we can increase it a little bit later. A little bit awkward typing from the right, so bear with me. <laughs> You have to love the lives. You're probably leaning over a camera and typing from an audio. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I can just use the enter button here to type out all three lines in one go, which is very useful. Okay. And I'm going to add my excl exclamation point because we're excited. All right set that design and I'm going to zoom in to 200% so we can see that a little bit better. Now I'm going to go into edit and it automatically grouped this text for me, but I'm going to ungroup it so that I can individually size up the lines here. So I have happy selected. I'm going to hit size and I'm going to increase proportionally until it looks like it's filling the circle nicely. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to select new, go back to size, increase it again. It can be a little bit tricky to try and keep them in the same proportion. But a nice trick that I like to use is to look at the same letter, if you have the same letter in two of your words. So in new and year, I have the letter E. So I'm just looking at the E until they look like they're about the same size. And that's a really good way to judge if your words are in the same scale. That looks great. And we can see it so well, too. I love that magnifier on there. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. And you can get it even closer, but I like to leave it at 200. So, and then I'm going to move it. I'm going to center first to make sure that they're all centered and then move it down. Select each word, center it, and just scooch it down. Move my happy up. Just kind of play with it until they look about even there. And I like to kind of preview the design without the lines and the red boxes and everything. And an easy way to do that is to just tap your hoop preview button and use the magnifying glass. And there it is really big and with no lines to distract you. So you can really get a feel of how it will look like when it's stitched out. That looks so that great. Looks pretty, yeah, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go into my embroidery uh, page. And I want this all in black and I want the machine to just stitch it straight through. So I'm going to go into layout and I'm going to hit the one thread color button. And this way the machine knows that I'm stitching out one color. It grayed out all of my thread spools here and it's not going to stop and ask me to change thread colors in between each portion of the design. So it's just going to stitch straight through nice and easy. That is one of another one of my favorite features because now if it's one color, it will just keep going. You don't have to keep stopping and starting. Exactly. 
I love that one. So this is the fabric that I chose. It's a nice Lorex, like silver and gold. I thought it was very New Year's Eve appropriate. So I used that and I stitched out my little design. It looked like this. And I'm gonna just walk through how I turned it into the little wine charm. So once this is stitched out, I cut it out into like a little square shape and I added my glue adhesive to the back. Um, and then I also cut out a second square that's about the same size as my circle here. And I made this little strap here and that's so that the, you can tie it onto your wine bottle so you can put your ribbon right through this strap. So I took another piece of fabric and I kind of made basically like a spaghetti strap. I think most of us have probably done that before. Get a little closer so you can see. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's a nice little spaghetti strap there, just a double fold on each end. And then for each little uh, wine charm that I made, I cut off a little piece and I stitched it onto the back of that little square of fabric. Then I just peeled that adhesive away, or the paper away, leaving the adhesive. I want the adhesive. Peels off nice and easy, and it leaves that glue on the front of your design. And I press the two of them together. So it ends up looking like this. And I use a lot of scrap fabric, so that's why these are all weird shaped pieces and everything like that. But um, you get the basic idea there. So you have your your front on, and then you have the back with the little loop that your string can go through there. So after that, all you need to do is trim right around your embroidery. You could, you know, I love this because it's it's a small, easy project, but you know, you could actually, in the big hoop, you could make a bunch of these together. Exactly, yeah. And that's what I like about the celebrate design too, because if you were sitting down and you want to just make 10 of those, you can kind of keep them on hand and use them for any occasion. Yeah, great idea. So I cut it out and it's all ready to go. Now you just have to put your string through this little tab here and you tie it right onto your wine bottle. Oh my it's God. that easy. <laughs> that's so easy. That's that's very easy. Yeah. I wanted to make it easy so that if you really didn't want to do a whole crazy project, you can do this really easily. It's very satisfying. It's very cute. <laughs> it's a good quick project. And this is perfect for right now. About now, we're a little bit tired of all of the activities from the last few weeks. We got a little bit more coming up the next few days. This is something easy. Sit down, have a cup of tea and sew these up, embroider them up. <laughs> exactly. Another idea that I had that I didn't try out was um, kind of making a little hole up here because when I went on to you know, Pinterest later and saw all the wine tags that just had the tie through the top, I think that would also be another easy way to do this is to just embroider like a, an eyelet hole basically, cut it out, and then you could just string right through your fabric there. That would be a great idea. By the way, Pinterest is no uh, affiliation to Brother, as you know. It's just another website, so keep that in mind. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so the next design that we'll take a look at is the nice 2022 there. This and I love. I love this one. Actually, I like them all, but this the 2022s or 20 whatever year it is. <laughs> These are awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I like this one. I used kind of like a jewel tone green there and then a metallic gold thread. So it's nice little pops of color. Definitely get a little bit of bling there. I like that. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go back to home embroidery and I'm going to go back into my text. And for this one, I used number five. I'm gonna to go to my numbers and type out 2022 and I'm gonna keep this, let's do medium, 2022. 
and we're gonna set that. Now the measurements right up here are showing that it's about uh, an inch wide, but I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go into edit, size, and just slowly bump that up until we're at about two inches. Closer to one and a half maybe, yeah. That looks great. So I'm gonna keep that at one and a half and it's three quarters inch uh, tall. Now adding the outline around this, I'll zoom in so we can get a better look, is so easy. All you have to do is press this applique button and there it is. It adds that outline for you. Um, with the press of a button, it's really impressive. Now, I'm not using this as an applique, but I will show you what happens when you uh, add the applique outline. I have my distance set at 0.2 inches. I find that that's a nice um, even distance around. It kind of smooths out all of those bumps for you. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now it added that outline in for me. When we go to the embroidery page, You'll see down here that it has applique material, applique position uh, listed. That's because it's gonna stitch out as if you were doing an applique, that placement line and the zigzag stitch and then do the satin stitch. So we don't really need those extra lines, but in the end, we get this nice little effect with the satin outline. So I just kind of let the machine do those extra stitches. I again, go into layout, and hit the one thread color button and it will just stitch right through. So when it's done, it'll just have a beautiful satin outline. That's beautiful. Boy, you know, that metallic thread on there looks fantastic. Do you have any tips? Because I know people watching that maybe they're new to embroidery or even not that haven't tried metallic thread. Do you have any tips for different needles or anything like that that you had to do or was it just it embroidered just fine? Thank you very much for reminding me. I did want to touch on that. The one thing that I do is I go into my settings and I slow down my embroidery speed. I slow it down to about 500 stitches per minute or 400 stitches per minute. And I find that um, when the machine stitches slower, I get less snags and less uh, rat's nests and all of that. Um, it, and I get a beautiful result with the metallic thread. Do you do anything different on your machine? You know that is a great tip. That is, I sometimes forget to do that, which is why I'm so glad you mentioned that. And exactly what you're talking about. Now, Brother has some amazing metallic thread. It mm -hmm. embroiders beautifully. But yes, sometimes if I'm doing something intricate and I forget to slow it down, that always saves it. So I'm so glad you mentioned that because I would have forgot. I was going to start doing these. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I, uh, I sometimes forget too, but you'll quickly remember once your machine starts uh, having some issues with that thread. It's just a little bit of a different texture than the machine is used to, I think. So that's why it kind of gets hung up on that metallic thread. But yeah, that, that, that would be my suggestion to just slow it down to 400 or 500 stitches per minute and you should be golden. This is brother uh, metallic thread that I use. So you can see that I was very successful with it. It looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And they have a ton of colors, by the way, in case you're wondering. So don't yeah. forget to call your brother dealer if you're looking for that. <laughs> <laughs> so to finish this one up again, you're gonna repeat the same steps that I was talking about with that Happy New Year um, little wine charm. You're gonna cut out another piece that's about the same size. You'll add the strap to the back, fuse them together and cut around the edge and you'll be good to go. That sounds great. Another I also, yes, another quick one. I also wanted to mention that this Happy New Year one is a design that you can really digitize on any of the Brother machines. You don't need the Luminaire for it because we're just using a font and a frame pattern. I wanted to make sure that um, everyone was able to do this project with any embroidery machine. So that is another thing I wanted to mention there. You know, that's great because I know a lot of people on here do have the Luminaire or they might have the Stellaire or Dream Machine. So a lot of these things they can do very similar, but it's great that you can show the other options because Brother has a wide range of machines. <laughs> they absolutely do. And they all are great at formatting and creating your own designs right on screen. So that's something that everyone should be taking advantage of, I think. 
Definitely. All right. All right next. <laughs> Next is going to be that uh, celebrate tag. We're going to do this one next. So cute. Ooh. I love some of those with tissue paper. You know, I never think about that. I always think I have to make the whole bag, but yeah. not necessarily because you made this so cute with tissue paper, which sometimes comes in the boxes that we get anyways. Talk about exactly. Yes, I love tissue paper. It's very versatile. Okay, so for this one, I started over at my Scan and Cut, and I'm using the new 330D. It's a great machine. And I pulled this Celebrate design straight from the patterns that come on the machine. So I'm going to go into Pattern and go to my Creative Phrases. And then I'm just going to go down three pages, I believe. Yep. And there it is. There's my Celebrate. Now it comes in at about six inches wide, which is way too big. So we are gonna size that down to about two and a half inches. And then I'm gonna set it. Now the one important thing that you have to remember here is when you're using the heat transfer vinyl, you have your carrier sheet on the front. That's that really thick plastic. And when you cut it, oh, sorry, I wasn't in front of the camera. <laughs> um, you have, this is your carrier sheet on the front. This is that thick plastic material that you're gonna be able to press your iron over to transfer your design onto your fabric. When you cut, you're gonna put that side face down on your mat and you're gonna cut on the softer back side of the material. So the one, thing that you have to do besides sizing the celebrate is mirror it because if you don't mirror it it's going to come out backwards and that is not going to be helpful <laughs> <laughs> and then that means for new year's you're going to have to give everyone a mirror so they can read it the correct way <laughs> <laughs> exactly so we're going to go into edit and object edit and all we have to do is press that mirror button and it flips it for us and then we're ready to go. So you can press OK. Another little thing that I like to do, but you don't have to do, I like to always add a weeding box around my design. It makes it easier to pull away all that negative space that you don't need um, around your design. So to do that, just go to OK. I'm going to select Cut. And I use my vinyl auto blade for this. And here you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your half cut is on because again, we have that carrier sheet on the front. We don't wanna cut through that. We only wanna cut through the backing material. So we're gonna put half cut on and the machine is so great at recognizing how much to cut. It does it for you. You don't have to test it out or you know fidget with the length of your blade. With the vinyl auto blade, it will measure down to the mat and it'll measure down to your cutting material and it will automatically subtract the difference for you and just on its own cut only half of your material. So it's incredibly easy to use um, and I just never have any hesitation with it. I don't even test it. I just trust that it works every time. Um, so that's a really great feature. That's awesome. So to put that weeding box on, I'm gonna go into settings I'm going to arrow down one. And this, just to point out, is where you can turn your half cut on and off. So make sure that that's on. And then you could also put your weeding box on. Press OK. And the machine just adds a rectangle right around your design. And again, that's going to make it easy for you to pull away all that negative space around your design. Um, and it'll just make it quicker for uh, you to be ready to transfer that over to your fabric. So that's it. Um, right now my start button is grayed out because I don't have a mat or a blade loaded, but if you had your mat and your blade loaded, you'd be ready to cut that out. That's great. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go back for one second. I'm gonna go into edit, and we're gonna just, again, take note of the size of our design. It's two and a half inches by about three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna go back to the luminaire and make 
our outline for this design to go inside of. Going back to home, this again is a really quick and easy one to do. I'm gonna go right back into my frame patterns and I'm gonna choose a rectangle. This time I used number 11. So I'm gonna set that. And we can see our measurements up here. It's about three inches wide, which is the perfect width for our two and a half inch heat transfer that's going in the middle. But at two and 2.18 inches tall, I think that's a little bit tall. So I'm gonna edit it. I'm gonna go into size and I'm gonna shrink the height all the way down. So now it's 1.3 inches. So those are better proportions for my design to fit inside nicely. So this is, I'm gonna get up and show you guys. This is my little celebrate. This is what it looks. This is what it looks like. Yeah, on the carrier sheet. So you can see that rectangle around. That's where my weeding box was cut. So I was able to just remove that part really quickly and get out all my little dots in between the E's and the A's and everything, and weed that nice and easy. You know, Sarah, I'm so glad you showed that. Uh, because a lot of people say, what's a weeding box? I don't even know what it is. And that explained it so well. A little box around so you don't waste all your vinyl either. Exactly. Yep, it's super helpful. So I did cut a little bit of extra space around there. So I'm just going to peel off the rest of that. And I do love to save as much vinyl as I can. Because the scan and cut makes it so easy to just put like a little square on there. And you can scan that in on your mat and you can cut out small little designs really accurately. So it's always, um, it's always worth it to save your little scraps. We love saving scraps. Yeah. Oh, perfect. So there it is. I pulled all that stuff away. And then this is my stitched out rectangle there. So all you'd have to do is lay that on top and center it. And then you just press it down. And uh, once the Celebrate transfers, you can peel away the plastic and you're all done. So that's okay. another quick and easy one. So easy to do. I love these projects. These are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and you could get so creative with them. I mean, there's tons of designs on the scan and cut. There's tons of designs in your embroidery machine already. So you can really go crazy and try a bunch of stuff out. Definitely. You know, I'm going to have to say, I know many of you are going to be doing this. So the easiest way to share, click us on Instagram. We'd love to see this. I know Sarah would love to see your projects. Brother So's always love to see this. And I'd love to see how you take this and twist it around because these are fun. Now, I have to say out of all of them, I don't know if I have a favorite because I love them all. But that one black bag with your 2020s all over it, I have to say that's my favorite. <laughs> That's a good one. So I let's get into how we make these because I have that all ready to go for you guys as well. Oh, wonderful. Oh, so we're gonna make the bag too. Yay, yeah. high five. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So I actually drafted a pattern for these myself and I made it available on my Pinterest. Um, oh, again, we're not affiliated with Pinterest, but um, I do have a link to that and I was able to kind of draw out the plans for you guys so that you can go ahead and draft your own bag pattern at home. That's so, great. so I'm going to put your website up below as well. So they can they go to your website then to get a link to find you there? Yes, you can go to my website. You can get the link to my Pinterest. And um, that is where you can find the pattern instructions. So but I'm going to go through it now, too. OK. And I'll put that down below too while you're going. Awesome, thank you. So here's our wine bag pattern. And this will kind of fit a wine bag, or sorry, it'll fit a wine <laughs> bottle of wine. Um, this, I have a bottle of Prosecco. So this was kind of the same shape as a champagne bottle. It'll fit a liquor bottle. It's pretty much one size fits all bottles. So I designed it that way. Um, and you know, Sarah, while you're saying that too, for somebody who maybe does it, they're like, you know what, I don't have alcohol or I'm going to, you know, they have those juice, um, 
they're like non-alcoholic. They're almost the same size as a champagne yeah. bottle. Those would be great for this as well if they're going to a party like that, you know? Exactly, yes. Sparkling cider is pretty much the same shape as like a champagne bottle. So any of that stuff would work. Perfect. So this bag comes in at uh, 15 inches high and seven and a quarter inches wide. And the reason it's only seven inches wide is because we're gonna cut two of these. So in the end, when you sew both sides together, it's gonna be 14 and a half inches around. So when you do the bag that has the 2022, what you're gonna do is take your pattern and you're going to cut out two pieces and then before you sew them together, you're gonna to wanna to embroider this design on the front. And the way that I did this was I just typed out 2022. Let me actually show you guys on the luminaire how I did that. Oh, that would be great. We like to follow along. <laughs> <laughs> We're a visual bunch. Oh, sorry, that's my skin cut. Okay. So I love it's this. It's gonna be really uh, hard to get used to the 2022 thing though. I don't know. <laughs> I know, it was kind of weird making it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete my rectangle. So I'm going back into my text category and I'm gonna choose pretty much any font. It really doesn't matter and I'll show you why later. So I'm gonna go into numbers and type out my 2022. I'll leave it large. Zoom in for you guys a bit. Oops. Not ready for that. Okay, so I'm gonna go into edit and I'm going to duplicate this four times. Then I'm gonna go into select. I'm gonna select all of them, press okay. And I'm gonna use my very favorite tool, the align tool. And what this is gonna do is it's going to align all of my numbers right in the center. So they're all gonna be lined up nice and neat. So I'm gonna press okay. And then I'm gonna select each of them and just move them up. Now I can move them up or down and still know that they're all lined up evenly in the center. So that's, that's why I love that tool. That is a really handy tool. Yeah. Okay, so I have four 2022s, but I wanna change the font of some of them and it adds a nice little interest going on there. So I'm gonna select my second one here. Oh no, undo. <laughs> select my second one. And what you can do right from this editing page is go into your text editing tools. And this button right down here that has the three A's, is gonna allow you to go ahead and just preview that 2022 in any font that you want. So I absolutely love that feature. Um, really allows you to just play around and see what you like. You know, I, I love that you're showing this because a lot of times with the text, people think you just type and that's it. And what do you wanna change? The Luminaire has added so many different things like this where you can switch this around just with a couple clicks. Check what it looks like. Change it again. Exactly. Yeah, it's really easy. It's really fun to play with. So I'm just going in and I'm changing three out of the four of them. And then once you see how they come in, like this one is super small, I can go in and I can just edit the sizes so that they look more proportional to each other. I can also go in like this first one, I feel like the numbers are a little bit more crowded than the rest of them. So I can go back into my text editing tool and I can go into spacing and I can space out my numbers so that there's a little more room in between each of them. So hit okay. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see that a little better. So I just spaced those numbers out a little bit so they have some room to breathe. 
And yeah, that's, that is pretty much how I digitize that design. It's super easy and really fun to do. Very easy to do. And so if you are new to this, don't forget, you can go back and watch this and follow along. That's really cute, Sarah. Yeah. And again, I used the metallic thread, so I slowed down my embroidery speed to about 400 stitches per minute and stitched out beautifully. Adorable. I think, uh, you know, <laughs> you're getting ready for the show. I hope you have a party to go to. You can come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you like yeah. So you're right on target. <laughs> I'm going to have to find a party now, right? And bring 12 <laughs> bottles of wine. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. All right. So getting back to our pattern. So as I mentioned, you're going to cut two of these. And I, um, I measured it out that you're going to want to put the top of your embroidery design about six inches down from the top of your pattern piece. So when you're doing the embroidery, um, it's really helpful to just take that piece that you're embroidering on, measure six inches down in the center, put a little pin in, and then once you put that in your hoop and in your machine, you can line up the top of your design with the pin before you start sewing, just pull that pin out. And then you'll know that the design is gonna lay right at the roundest part of the wine bottle. So you'll get good visibility on all your, your stitch work there. Oh, that was a good tip for that. Yeah. So a little more about the construction here. So this design, I did a heat transfer. That's good too. Did you get that out of the scan and cut or did it uh, just uh, someplace else? I created this design myself and it's also available on in the same place that the wine bag pattern is, I gave it to you guys to use. So I uploaded a little photo. You can, <laughs> you can just download the photo and scan it right into your scan and cut and it'll convert it to cut data for you. So that's, that's there for too. Since we're not technically live, I will make sure in the comments, I leave this link from myself during the show. Also, the websites are below. And I always put the replays of the shows on my website, too. So I'll just put the replay with a link directly to where this is for her. So there's three ways to find this. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, I want everyone to have access to all this so they can make these wine bottles before or wine bottle bags before New Year's. Wonderful. All right. So... I stitched out the bag first for that one, and then I went ahead and measured, but because I finished off the top edge, I had to make sure to adjust my measurement. That's an important little thing to remember. So the way that I finished off the top edge here is just a double roll, pressed it down, and did a straight stitch across. So I took off half an inch. I hate to interrupt, but I love that fabric. <laughs> Yeah, I like this one too. This is a scrap fabric I've had for so long and now I know why I kept it because it was meant to be for this project. <laughs> so when you measure down, if you finish your bag first before putting the design on the front, you're going to want to measure down five and a half inches instead of six. Just a quick little thing to remember. All right, I keep getting sidetracked here, but basically what I wanted to show you is the technique that I used for finishing off the inside of this bag. I did a French seam. Angela, do you like French seams? Oh, I love French seams. I love <laughs> French seams. This bag is just getting better and better. <laughs> I love French seams too, because they're so easy and they come out really clean on the inside. So when you cut out your two pieces, you're gonna put them wrong sides together and you're gonna sew your seam on the outside here. And it's gonna feel very unnatural because your seam allowance is gonna stick out on the front, on the nice side of your fabric. But trust me on this one, you're gonna stitch around your bag and then you're gonna trim that quarter inch seam allowance down to an eighth of an inch. So trim it right in half. Then you'll turn your bag inside out. Oh, and also make sure to, to uh, just snip your curves. That'll release the tension on the curves and it'll get a nice smooth effect when you finish it. So snip, trim, and then you turn it inside out. You're just gonna roll out your seams and give it a nice press. 
And then you're going to go around and you're going to stitch another quarter inch seam right around the edge once again. And what that's going to do is just, it's going to enclose that eighth of an inch that was left over. And when you're finished, you'll have a clean seam on the outside. And you'll have this beautiful clean seam on the inside. So it's kind of like a way of doing binding without having to do binding, right? <laughs> it, that is such a great idea for that bag. I would have never thought about that. And now, you know, you could do a surge edge too, but this is so beautiful on the inside, beautiful on the outside. Look at that. Exactly. Yeah, it comes out nice and smooth. It's not too bulky and you don't have to worry about anyone looking inside and seeing all these frayed seams. You don't have to worry about finishing it. It's done in like three minutes. You're finished, ready to go. We like this, three minutes, <laughs> perfect. <Yes. laughs> so that's basically it. And then again, to finish the top, I just did a double fold and a straight stitch across the top there. And for this gold one, I went ahead and I attached my ribbon at the back with a little tack down stitch, nothing crazy. That way when you untie it, it doesn't fall off, it stays there. Great. It also makes it, makes it much easier to tie because you don't have to hold that string on there. And if you wanna reuse this bag, you never have to look around for a string or anything because it's gonna be stitched on. <laughs> that would be, that is such like a simple thing, but my strings would be everywhere. So attaching it to the back, number one, you know which way to tie it. Number two, you don't lose it. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's about it. Um, again, with this heat transfer design, I mirrored it. I used my weeding box and I used half cut on the scan and cut. So a few important things to remember there, but it's a really cute design and also pretty pretty neutral, like, especially because this is a wine bag. So you're always going to be carrying wine and you have little glasses clinking on the front. So it's another good neutral design. Very fun. That is so nice. So the design that you drew out that they can go to your website to get and find the link uh, for that. So they will just scan that into the scan and cut. Yep. You can just print it out on any printer. Black and white printer would be perfect and you just scan it right in. You can use your low tech mat to just press the paper on there, scan it in, and then you wanna to convert to cut data. And that is going to recognize the shape on there and it's gonna convert it to a cut file for you. Wonderful, and I know people watching that have the Luminaire that play all the time with my design center, Yes, you could also probably scan that into the Luminaire and embroider it as well. I'm really excited to see what people do with this. These are such great ideas, Sarah. I love it. I'm excited too. I hope you all have fun playing around with this. I hope I at least inspired you to make something fun with your wine bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Some, it's a great way to give a gift, and it's not even just for New Year's. You've gave me a lot of fun ideas for what's coming up. Valentine's, you can think ahead. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, wine is... Good on any occasion, right? I agree. So this is wonderful. So again, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to remind you again, up above us is all of our Instagram. Be sure to tag us if you make these or anything that we show on the show, uh, because we love to see it. Sarah's website's down below as well. So is mine. Brother Sews, by the way, there are, I actually did a wine bag years ago. I love what you did. I actually sewed some ribbon on the fabric first and then made a wine bag. So you could combine both what I did and what she did and make an even wowser bag. <laughs> Although <laughs> I wouldn't finish it quite as quickly as you just showed. <laughs> that would be so cool. That would be a fun project. So be sure to visit the blog. And also if you're bored for the next few days, you know, New Year's Eve, you got a few days off, hopefully. Maybe you can veg, go back to Brother Sews. You can binge watch all of these videos for a long time. <laughs> so Sarah, this is fantastic. Are you doing anything exciting for New Year's? Because I can't even stay up till midnight. <laughs> I try, <laughs> but it never works. Um, no, not doing anything for New Year's. <laughs> Except no. having some wine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring you a bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you have a happy New Year. I hope all of you out there watching have a happy New Year. And thanks for having me, Angela. 
Oh, it's wonderful to have you. And Brother Sows, uh, Brother Sows and Crafting, thank you for having your Brother Brand Ambassadors. This is, we have one more show before the new year is hitting off. Sarah, you gave us a few days at least to get these in order. I have to get to my embroidery machine and get some tags. You know what I was thinking? I'm going to a party in a couple of weeks. I need some tags for that. This is not just for New Year's. Great ideas you have. Thank you, That's Sarah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.